Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath to those that are watching us online. Hopefully, you'll have enough courage one of these days to come here and visit us and join us here. So, I hope you had enjoyed uh, the last couple of weeks of this month. Um, the first, uh, the first week was about God, God of love, right? And then we had uh, Brother Virgil uh, last week talk about um, from paradise to panic. Um, and he shared the story about uh, Noah and the generations of Noah. Um, you know, how they, would, they uh, followed him, probably not as, uh, as uh, well as uh, Noah would have liked, but, you know, they attempted to follow him. But he was setting a good example for his, uh, his kids, the generations to come, no? Mm -hmm. When he was living during his time. And uh, today, we're hopefully going to learn to love those who hate us. Amen? Amen? So let's bow our heads for prayer again. Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you that have chosen me to speak today. Lord, I'm not worthy as your servant. But I thank you that you have asked me to deliver the message you have today. That it may bless us and bless those that we can share it with of how much you love them. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I'm getting teary-eyed here because of the things that are coming um, to our families. Um, losing people. And it's, and it's hard. I wasn't expecting this. This wasn't part of my sermon. <laughs> um, but the text, thank you, sister. It says, but I say unto you which hear, <sighs> love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. I think we all know that as a person who loves God, who has a love for God, that it is natural for us to be with those who love God as well. Amen? Right? Because we're safe around them. But Jesus says here in this verse, to those that I hear, can you hear him? Those that I hear, brothers and sisters, he says, love your enemies. So I don't know about you, but <laughs> when I first looked at these verses, I thought this is my topic. God, I'm not sure. <laughs> Because for me, I don't have any, I don't have much enemies because I don't consider people enemies because I don't know them. And usually I stick around those people that I know. And usually people that I know love, love God. So, you know, it was hard for me to recall anything at all in my childhood. You know, was there anyone there that hated me that I know of? So I read on, because that's what you're supposed to do if you don't understand it. You read the Bible. You know, and um, if you can't find it in the Bible, I kept reading. I found uh, Sister Ellen White's, and she says, Those who love God will not choose the enemies of God to be their friends. But you will never be where you will find too much light in our world than how perilous it is to choose the association of those who love darkness rather than light and will not come to the light lest their deeds be reproved. That's Fundamentals of Christian Education in 294.2. So I keep reading. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, verses 32-36. 
just confuses me even more because it says, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend sinners and to receive as much back. He says, but love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. You will be the sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. So I keep reading. <laughs> I go to the other um, other gospel in Matthew five forty six forty eight. It's the same story, as most of you know. For if, those, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so? It says, therefore you shall be perfect just as the Father in heaven is perfect. So, I'm still stuck here. So I thought, let's find out, let's try to define those who hate you. I mean, hate is a very strong word. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, I can, I can you know, I, I can agree with dislike. I don't like that, or I don't like this, but hate, it's a very strong word. So I can think of, you know, people that temporarily hate me or you, because you did something to offend them or hurt them, right? We can easily forgive those. Uh, I remember an ex a specific example. God, you know, help me re uh, remember. Um, I was, it was my elementary school, sixth grade. I think it was the first year that we were here in the U.S. And this was in Vallejo. This kid, he was, you know, a little bit taller than me, a little bigger than me, um, you know, body-wise. But um, I was taller than him, for sure. But he wanted to show off to his friend because he's been uh, taking lessons, right, uh, in fighting. So he thought he, he would use me as an example for no reason at all. He chose me. Now, he hit me a few times, you know, I, you know um, and I don't know what I was doing. I just stood there, not doing anything. I don't know how to fight. I just took it, and I just walked away for no reason, right? Temporary, um, those are cont temporary hatred because there's no, no reason for him to do that. And it happened again. Um, when I moved to Oakland, this, this time I had my backpack on and somebody jumped me from the back. So because of the weight of my books, I couldn't get up, right? But I reported him to the, to the teacher and the next day he got in trouble for it. I don't know exactly what happened. I, I've never been bothered since. <coughs> but there's people that hate us permanently, either because we did something wrong or they did something to hurt them, right? And this is far more difficult for me to explain because I have no experience in it. I don't know how to forgive someone that, you know, um, abuses you, beats you down, or even rape you. I don't know what that feels like. All I can say is God tells us to love our enemies. 
All I can think of is find a reason to forgive them because they did not know any better. Just like the people that crucified Jesus Christ. Do you think they knew that they were crucifying their own God? I mean, think about that. At the time, they crucified him not knowing. Yet Jesus Christ had the heart to forgive them. He said, because they did not know what they're doing. He was beaten and abused. You know, and these are people with no moral compass. All I can think of is, you know, for you that have suffered this, God will judge them accordingly. And I can assure you that God will have his wrath. I mean, didn't he have the wrath when he flooded the world before Noah? Because how, how terrible people were? I'm sure they'll suffer the same. No verbal abuse. I can't say I had too much of that. I mean, sibling rivalry, <laughs> I don't think it counts, right? You can't, you can't hate your brothers or sisters. It's hard for you to do that. They're your blood relative, right? Even your cousins, you know? But I'm referring to other people, you know, that, that you may know. They may, demean, you know, they may say, you know, some demeaning words, uh, they may do stuff to bring you down. You know, these are people that, that may hate you. Then I can think of jealous people that may hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> no, but uh, they think that I have it better than, than they do. Or maybe uh, they're making jokes about me because there are certain things I do or certain things I believe in. You know, when I stopped eating pork, they thought I was crazy. Right? You know, these are all, you know, somewhat temporary and, and somewhat permanent. Some people don't like you because of that. You're too good. You know, and, and I'm not saying that I'm good. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm good. Um, an opposite, I don't consider myself good because my standard is Jesus Christ. And I could never live up to, you know, where he's at. And covetous people. These are the people that want what you have. You know, maybe my wife. Maybe my nieces, my sister-in-law, my, my, brother, my brother-in-law, or, you know, whoever's in my family. Because they think, you know, maybe because of, you know, postings that we have on Facebook. I don't know if you realize it, but stuff that you post on Facebook, people look at. They admire you. They admire it, and they put you on a pedestal. You know, they think that you're, you're great, and you have all this, like, um, money, or you're financially well off. No. That's why I'm very careful about what I post. You know, I minimize the postings I have because I know people do covet. But when I look at the verses again in Luke about loving your enemies, this is not what Jesus is talking about. So I read more in Ellen White. And this is in her early writings. It says, I saw that Satan bade his angels lay their snares, especially for those who were looking for Christ's second appearing, and keeping all the commandments of God. Is that us? That's us, right? We're trying to keep the commandments of God? Even if we're, if we're not successful, we're trying to keep it all. Satan told his angels that the churches were asleep. He would increase his power in lying wonders. And he, and he could hold them. But, he said, the sect of Sabbath keepers we hate. They are continually working against us and taking from us our subjects to keep the hated law of God. This is Satan speaking now. He says, go make the possessor of lands and money drunk with cares. 
If you can make them place their affections upon these things, we shall have them yet. Okay, so keep this in mind for those of people that you know close to you that are probably well off, they have a lot of land, maybe uh, a lot of money. You have to give them this message. They may profess what they please, only make them care more for money than for the success of Christ's kingdom or the spread of truth we hate. This got me more interested. It says, present the world before them in most attractive light that they may love and idolize it. Okay, I don't know about you. I don't like to be poor. I mean, we, were, we weren't poor to begin with. We were lower middle class. But I don't want to be poor and I don't want to be stuck in middle class. I always, I've always struggled to be more than where I am because to me that's progress that I'm involving, I'm changing. But I always remember not to, to want more money for myself, but to be able to share it with others. <coughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's my problem. It's, I, I want to get more so I can share it with others. I want to be able to help more people. And he says... Satan says, cause disturbance and confusion if possible. Destroy love for one another, it says. Hmm. <laughs> Discourage and dishearten their ministers, for we hate them. So I ask for your prayers. The speakers that we have in this church, the people that are teaching Sabbath school, have special prayers for them. He continues, Prevent every possible, possible call, call, excuse to those who have means, lest they hand it out. See, they want to stop me. Control the many matters if you can. Drive their ministers to want and distress. This will weaken their courage and zeal. Make covetousness and love of earthly treasure ruling traits of their character. You see that? <laughs> These are things I, I need to watch out for. And, and my struggle. And he continues, as long as these traits rule, salvation and grace stand back. Crowd every attraction around them, and they will surely be ours. And not only are we sure of them, but their hateful influence will not be exercised to lead others to heaven. When any shall attempt to give, put within them a grudging disposition that may it may be sparingly. We were just talking about honesty with God, tithing, in Sabbath school. So I hope that we don't ever feel disgrudgingly about putting our tithes in. <clears throat> and I even heard from Ata Florence, she was telling a story about uh, satanic worshipers who were praying. They're praying for their kingdom uh, more adamantly now you know, getting together uh, possibly more than we have because if they are praying, and, and, and I'm actually, um, and she was kind of concerned about that, but me, I wasn't worried. I was actually happy that they were praying. The reason I'm happy is because if they are praying, that means we are doing something right, right? Because they're praying for us to fail, but we're doing something right. So we continue doing what we're doing. Plus, we have God. <laughs> Their prayers don't mean anything. I mean, who is greater than God? The only thing that I'm concerned about is that we don't puff up ourselves. That, that we are so great, and that would be our downfall. So those are the things that I thought, you know, I was thinking about enemies. And I think that's what God wants us to know. In the Desire of Ages, it says, This love manifested in the church will surely stir the wrath of Satan. Christ did not mark out for his disciples an easy path. 
If the world hates you, he said, you, know, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But you are not of the, the world. I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word I said unto you, Jesus says, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If you have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sakes, because they know not him that sent me. The gospel is to be carried forward by aggressive warfare in the midst of opposition, peril, loss, and suffering. So if we're not seeing it right now, these enemies, you know what that means, right? <laughs> Some point in time, we will face this. Maybe it's not today. Maybe it's not tomorrow. Maybe it's a year from now. Maybe it's two years from now. Who knows? But expect this because Jesus experienced it. Let's go to John 15. Verse 18 to 25. This talks about the world's hatred. I don't hear much flipping, but uh, maybe you have your iPads and iPhones. <laughs> Hopefully you have those. John chapter 15, verses 18 to 25. You know, it talks about the same. If the world hates you, you know, Jesus, this, this is Jesus Christ speaking now. He says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So as you stand here today, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, he says, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If you have kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sakes, because they do not know him who sent me. These are people that do not know God that we're talking about. The enemies of God. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. Because Jesus showed the light, right? He showed exactly what sin is and what, what it looks like. He says, but this happened that the world might, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So these are the enemies that we're talking about. So do we have an understanding of who hates us? Right? We have a pretty good grasp now about who we're talking about that hates us. See, God wants us to be like him. This is why he came as Jesus Christ. He came as Jesus Christ as a human being. He did not exercise his power or authority as God. Right? You keep that in mind. He did not do anything to use his power or authority. He set an example for us to follow. Do you, start, do you see that even though he was, he was weak, I'm sorry, not weak, but meek and humble. He was strong. The Spirit of God was strong in him. This is the example that he set before us. This is what we must follow as his disciples. By, by being weak, God is stronger in his nuts. Amen? Doesn't that say that in the Bible? When we are weak, he is strong.
So the next one, the next time that someone questions your, your humility, your meekness, or your weakness, or whatever other hateful things they could say to you, remember, that means God is stronger than you. Amen? So let him, let him come out. Let the enemies come to you. And tell your enemies, it's okay. You understand. Because God is with you. And the more of God there is within you, who cares what they say? I mean, can you imagine the power that that has over those who would hate you? I mean, you, you think about it. Someone that would condemn you. I think it would light up the Spirit of God in them. Amen? Because we all have the Spirit of God when we're born. The problem is either the world or the things around them extinguished it. So it's our job as Christians, as we're brothers and sisters, to help them ignite that fire. Let's help them ignite that fire. Keep it going. Right? If you really want to make a difference and please God, you want God to be happy with you. That's what you have to do. Follow his teaching. Love those who hate you, whomever that may be. It says in Upper Look, Mr. White says, Christ enjoins upon his followers to love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. It's also in Matthew 5, 44. He would have us love those who oppress us and do us harm. She says, and this is important, we must not express in words and acts the spirit they manifest, but improve every opportunity to do them good. Now I know it's very difficult to do. But God is saying, this, these are opportunities for us to win souls for him. Right? These are opportunities for us. You want to be crowned? You, wanna, you want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant? Follow him. Follow his footsteps. I'll end with these two things from Ellen White. It's from the Testimonies for the Church in Volume 2, page 491.2. 491.2. Those who have no love for God will not love the children of God. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. I'm going to end with Jesus' word in John 15, verse 17. This is, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he's not done here yet. This is kind of like in the middle of his sermon to his disciples. But he says, these things I command you, that you love one another. You know, I started to look at this verse. Loving those who hate you, Jesus asked that he commands. Trying to get an understanding of what that means. And I'm trying to relay this message to you. What does it mean for you to love your enemies? Maybe you're surrounded by people that you love. That's all good and well. He wants us to do that because he, we, we, he wants you to continue um, to be good, to follow his footsteps. 
But Jesus, in, in, the, in these words, he's asking us for more. To love our enemies. So that's, that's my challenge for you. Today and forward. And it's the same challenge that I have. To love those enemies. Because it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. But because she, Jesus said it. We have to follow. Let's pray. God of Father, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we thank you for the lesson that you have given us today about loving our enemies. Lord, though we may not know them, we may not see them, Lord, we pray that you give us discernment, that you give us the calmness and the boldness to speak with your love, with your care. Just as you have shown us when we were sinners, Lord. You have reached out to us. You have begged us. You have knocked on our hearts, Lord, many times. And you continue to do so to pursue our hearts. Lord, I pray for everyone in this church and those watching. That they may continue to seek you first. And in seeking you first, have that love that you have started with us. And continue on that with that love. To be able to learn to love our enemies. With great love and mercy, just as you have shown us when you are here, Lord. Lord, I pray that whatever encumbrances, whatever things that prevent us from coming to you, no matter what it is, Lord, bring them out to us. Help us to see what it is doing with our relationship with you. So that we may learn and understand and know your love much better. So that we may be able to share this with others as well. For God, we don't do this for ourselves, but for your glory and for your honor, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the hands that prepared the food that we're about to partake. Bless them so that it may give us the nourishment that we need. And the fellowship that we have with each other, Lord. Bless it so that we may bring each other up. That we may continue in our faith. And be with each other. Lifting each other up just as you have asked us. In Jesus' name we pray.